Playing video games is a time-consuming hobby. As adults with full-time jobs, it can be hard to find the time, especially if you have family commitments or, God forbid, other hobbies too. It was so much easier when we were kids, when playing video games made you weird and nobody wanted to hang out with you, therefore giving you more time to play. Unfortunately, when you do find the time to play, you don't always feel like it. There are a lot of reasons why you might suffer from video game burnout and you might not even realise that it's happening. For me, it all started with Starfield. Now I'm sure that somebody somewhere will take issue with this, but my god I found that game boring. I was 100% sure that I was going to love it. And yet I found it to be so needlessly complicated, but also somehow super bland and really not that impressive to look at. I turned it off after an hour and thanked the finance gods that it was on Games Pass and I hadn't paid full price for it. I fired up my PS5, looked at my games list, and realised that I had an alarming number of games that I had started but not finished, and I couldn't think of a reason why. Baldur's Gate 3? Amazing! Alan Wake 2? Hell yes! Lies of P? Spectacular! Yet when I thought of picking any of these games back up again, it felt like I had a mental block. I wasn't sure if I was just overwhelmed by choice, or if it was because I had too many games on the go. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and eventually, I realised I was burnt out. This prompted me to take a proper look into why this happens, and what you can do to help yourself. I hadn't stopped gaming entirely after all. I had no issue playing all the way through Gears of 4 and 5 over Christmas, and I was always willing to pick up a game if I needed footage for it for a new video. But I just couldn't bring myself to jump back into any one of these amazing games, and I wanted to try and figure out why. I'm still on the journey out of my own burnout, but I've picked up some really useful tips along the way, and they've helped me out a lot. Welcome back! So, going back to Starfield for a minute. There's a big debate going on at the moment on whether or not games are boring now, or we're just older and we've seen it all before. And this can be a huge factor in burning yourself out. We all get burnt out in our day jobs, it's just a fact. And usually it's because the same things happen over and over again, with no change or end in sight. We can't see it, but we're all trapped inside these strange repeating loops. So let's think about repetitive game and quest design about huge open worlds, stuffed with markers, that may or may not actually be all that fun. If you compare Assassin's Creed Valhalla to Horizon Forbidden West, you'll see a lot of the same issues, even though to me at least, the games are actually very different. I didn't particularly enjoy Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I found a lot of the quests felt like the same types of busy work. On the other hand, I adored Horizon Forbidden West, and carried on playing long after the Platinum and all through the DLC. I found the exploration to be really fun and rewarding, and I love the combat and all the weapons and the variety in all the robot dinos. And I enjoyed the writing and quest design too, but the map was awful. It was far too cluttered and overwhelming, and until I started filtering the markers, it genuinely got in the way of me enjoying the game. After Horizon I moved on to Elden Ring, and it was so refreshing to have such a different style of map. It felt like it was just me and the adventure, instead of me and the big list of things to do. And this design philosophy is at the centre of the problem in so many modern games, as well as in this conversation. When a game feels like work, that's a problem. If you feel like you know what's coming and you're not excited for it, that's a problem. If you're no longer excited at the thought of booting up your favourite game, or you feel like you need to play everything, or indeed you feel like you need to play any game at all, then these are problems. You need to eat, you need to sleep. Video games, as delightful as they can be, are not a requirement for being alive. <laughs> when I started looking into burnout, early on I thought I might have stumbled onto a quick fix, and this was to just pick a game and make yourself play it for one hour. I'll explain this in more detail later, because it's actually a very useful technique, but my first attempt backfired on me big time, and revealed an even deeper issue. You see, sometimes the problem might be the way that you play a game, rather than the game itself. If you've played video games a certain way for so many years, it can impact your enjoyment even when it doesn't need to. Now this is not to say that there's any real right or wrong way to enjoy a game, but if you're burnt out, it might do more harm than good. Let me explain this one. I'm a very thorough gamer. I like to check everywhere for secrets or helpful items, because I like to do things, as I would term it, properly. Alan Wake 2 is a genuinely fantastic game that keeps on surprising me in all the right ways, and it was the game I chose when I first attempted the one hour tactic. 
Even though I do it without conscious thought at this point, I actually noticed while I was playing that I was checking every nook and cranny. Before I would go to the objective, I would go exploring off the beaten path. And the reason I noticed I was doing this was because it got in the way of me enjoying the game. I picked up a plot point, which is something that Alan can use to rewrite reality. But before I used it, I thought, oh, I'll just check over here first. And I got distracted and eventually reached an area where I picked up another plot point. This reminded me that I picked up another one earlier on, so I decided to try and use that one first. But it didn't work because I'd moved too far away from the relevant area. I became super worried that I'd done the game wrong, and this was when the alarm bells went off. Something in the back of my mind knew that this was stupid. It's not real life, it's not actually work, it's not a task that I need to complete. In the grand scheme of my time on Earth, this doesn't matter. And just to be clear, there isn't anything wrong with playing games this way either, or any other way really. But when it affects you like this, then something isn't right. I realised that I needed to take a step back and figure out what was going wrong. So first up, to address the obvious, putting some distance between you and the problem is a solid first step for any issue, not just video game burnout. In the modern world, the single biggest cause of workplace absence these days is work-related stress, and the doctor will almost always put some space between you and the source of the stress, i.e. your job, as the first step. I'd personally recommend taking a few days away from video games altogether and see how you feel, but there's room to manoeuvre here too if you're not prepared to do that. You could always take a step back from certain types of games, or perhaps even your console of choice. For me, I realised a part of why I was okay with Gears of War was because it was on my Xbox. My primary machine for many years now has been my PS5. It's where most of my games live, and it's what my brain associates with gaming more than anything else, whereas my Xbox is quite new. I tested this out by trying a brand new game on the Switch, but it didn't go as well as I'd hoped. At first it was okay, but I soon realised that Shin Megami Tensei 5 would be a big time investment, and I started to feel overwhelmed. Was it the size of the game that was bothering me, or was it because it was new? So I fired up Persona 5 on my Switch, and amazingly, I was fine. The very nature of the Switch invites the idea of pick up and put down video games, and even though Persona 5 is by far the longest story-based video game I have ever played, I know it very well, and I felt no pressure whilst playing it. Because it wasn't new, and I didn't really need to think about it, I was okay. So I've managed to identify two major elements in my case. The pressure of taking on a large-scale new challenge, and familiarity with how I would usually experience these challenges, i.e. my PS5. It's worth trying different things to figure out where your problems stem from, but I'd also say don't put too much pressure on yourself to figure it out. A lot of these moments were aha moments for me, and I followed the clues as they came. Taking a few days off right from the start will do you a lot of good though. It will free up the part of the brain experiencing the problem, and you'll be able to see things a bit more clearly as time goes on. As time goes on, you'll know yourself how you're feeling about things. When I fire up my PS5 now, there are still some games that I cannot fathom playing. Trust me when I say, your body will tell you if your subconscious doesn't think it's a good idea. One day I was absently scrolling through the PlayStation Store, and my story took the most unexpected turn. Available for the PS4 was Johnny Trigger. For those of you who don't know, this is a mobile game. I loved it so much that I unlocked everything and played it for something stupid like 5,000 levels. What can I say, I have a long commute to my day job. Seeing this game available for PlayStation for less than the price of a large coffee, well I just had to do it. And before I knew it, I'd been playing for over an hour in a state of pure nirvanic bliss. This updated version of the game was more satisfying than ever, with no mandatory adverts, and it never occurred to me that they would add trophies. I'm not generally too bothered about them, but they came thick and fast here, and the dopamine hits were real. This got me thinking about indie games, which isn't something I've traditionally bothered with, and whether or not they could be a step in my journey to combat my burnout. So I re-downloaded Power Wash Simulator. I sank an inordinate amount of time into this game last year. It's insanely comforting and satisfying to play, and the DLC packs are brilliant. On the subject of which, I saw that they had released some Back to the Future DLC since the last time I had looked. I didn't even hesitate, and within minutes I was jet washing the back of the DeLorean, and I was so happy. This supported my theory that part of my issue was with the unknown, and having to think about new challenges. I'm sure there are some indie games out there that really tickle the brain, but the ones that I mentioned here really don't, and I was already familiar with them. 
they're very simple to play. Sure they do require some thinking, but lining up a colourful headshot and finding that last bit of dirt isn't quite the same as completing a murder board. I've since picked up some more indie games to try out, and I have to give special mention here to Untitled Goose Game, because it has a direct link to the part of my brain that feels joy. I've also regained enough comfort with my PS5 that I've been able to try my hand at what I would consider more traditional games, and I've advanced a bit more in Lies of P. At the time of writing, we're not far off Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I'm starting to feel confident that I will be ready for it when it arrives. One thing I will say though, is when you reach this stage in your own journey, give yourself an hour. Let me explain this one too. When you're feeling overwhelmed, your brain will put up walls to try and keep out anything new. So naturally, if you're going against the grain and trying a game that would have previously caused you trouble, your brain will try to protect you. So even though you might think you're ready to try gaming again, part of you will still be confused about it. This is okay though. Like I said earlier, if you're really not ready, believe me, you will know. There is a big difference between feeling everything we discussed earlier and thinking, uh, I don't really want to play this one today. But otherwise, there are things you can do to make things a bit easier on yourself and find out whether you really are ready or not. Switch off your phone, get yourself comfortable, maybe with snacks and a drink, and play the game for one hour. If you are ready, then your brain will stop rebelling sooner than you think. How quickly this happens will depend on how good the game is, and if it's something that you would actually enjoy. If you're watching that clock crawl to an hour, then you probably have your answer about whether you like the game or not. But if you're like me, and you realise long after the fact that you've just spent over an hour lining up headshots, or sparkling up your flux capacitor, then you know you've picked a winner. Free bonus tip, this doesn't even have to be when you're feeling overwhelmed either. I experience this a lot when I replay a game and I don't want to sit through the opening again. This give yourself one hour tactic can really help in a lot of gaming situations. Like if a game has a lot of talking at the start for example. When trying different things and doing all my research, I had a light bulb moment. Light bulb and remembered that I burned out on video games once before, and I burned out hard. About 10 years ago, I was a massive achievement hunter. I was obsessed with my gamer score, and when I hit six figures, it was a very proud day for me. One day, I was torn between playing Devil May Cry 4 or Tomb Raider Temple of Osiris. I was torn between difficulty-dependent achievements in an already very challenging game, or multiplayer achievements, which I hated on principle, as they usually required me to join a booster group. I sat agonising over this for over an hour, until I realised that I had a problem. From that day onwards, I have never obsessed over achievements or trophies to that level again. I have still earned the Platinum Trophy for games whenever I've wanted to, but I've also abandoned my pursuit of certain Platinums whenever it's been impacting my enjoyment of the game, because that matters more to me now, and I'm much happier for it. So when it comes to how you play your games, ask yourself if you can approach things another way. Contrary to my story just now, you might really enjoy it if you try out trophy or achievement hunting. You might enjoy increasing a game's difficulty, or joining a clan and playing online. Or you could maybe even try streaming your favourite games. Before YouTube, I was an affiliate on Twitch, and I had lots of fun and made a ton of friends. Or you could even see about replaying your favourite games, but in a different way. My favourite example here is Mass Effect, especially when you get into the sequels. You can play as Bro Shep or Fem Shep, and straight away that gives the game a different feel, and opens up different romance options too. Then you can play as a Paragon, or you can play as a Renegade, which will result in some wildly different story beats. You questioned my competence through the entire mission. Best way to stop that is to show me you're competent. Oh, and also you can play as a different character class too. Soldiers are fine and all, but have you ever picked Vanguard? Warped across a map and shotgun blasted someone in the face? See, it's very different, isn't it? Real life has enough work to do, and hobbies or passions are supposed to be a break from that. As a functioning human being in the modern world, you deserve to have something to look forward to. And if the thing you usually look forward to isn't that anymore, it's okay. You don't have to do it, and you aren't bound to something just because you've always done it that way. There are things that you can do to help yourself, and I hope this video has helped you in some way. Remember guys, you're doing just fine, and it does get better. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, Baldy out.